Welcome to everyone joining us for worship today. This Wednesday, you're invited to participate in our first Lenten study. On Tuesday, a video will be available for you to watch on our Facebook and YouTube pages. And then on Wednesday night at 7 o'clock, we will have a discussion together on Zoom. The link for the Zoom discussion will be sent out in the next day or two. And we hope to see you all there. Psalm 147 reminds us that God's pleasure is not in strength or speed, but in those who bow down in awe at God's presence. Let us worship in humility and gratitude.
join together in our prayer of confession. God, our creator and redeemer, too often we have looked but not seen your hand at work in creation. We have listened but not heard the distress of those who are in need around us. We have tasted but not digested your word that comes to us in the scriptures. We have read about but not lived into the life of Jesus, our Lord and Savior. Fill us completely with your spirit and make us new again. God's embrace is wide and God's love is deep. In Jesus Christ, God forgives us and leads us to a new life. Amen. a sign here. It says, Welcome to the Kingdom of Caddy Wumpus. Wow, I wonder what that could mean. I've never heard of the Kingdom of Caddy Wumpus. Maybe we'll run into someone who can help us and tell us about this place. Oh, 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 oh excuse me, excuse me, sir. Oh, oh what? Uh, oh, hello there, young lady. Well, hi. I just got here and I saw your sign that says, Welcome to the Kingdom of Caddy Wumpus. And I was wondering, well, uh, well, actually, you, you look like maybe you're the king. Do you think I should bow or call you your majesty or do something like that? Oh, ho, ho, ho. me the king? Oh. Well, now that's funny. Uh, what makes you think I'm the king? Well, you're dressed like a king, and you're wearing a crown like a king. Oh, heavens no! I'm not the king. Well, then, are you a prince or a duke or some other royalty? Oh, <laughs> no, no, no. Oh. Can't you see? I'm the street sweeper. The street sweeper? Oh, yes. It's a very important job. I like to keep things very neat and orderly here in the kingdom. Oh. Okay. So every day... I come out and take my broom and sweep the streets. Lots of dust, you know. <laughs> I see, but do you mind if I ask you another question? Oh, go right ahead. But I must be going soon to do my duties. Well, I'm wondering why a street sweeper is dressed like a king. Oh, <laughs> oh, 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 yes. Well, well, I'm, I'm sure it must be very confusing if you've never been here before. Mm. But I think you'll find quite a few surprising and unexpected things here in the kingdom. I think you might be right about that. Oh, well, I really must be going. Lots of streets to sweep, you know. Oh, it's been nice talking with you. Say hello to the king if you see him. Uh, oh, well, goodbye. Well, <laughs> well, yes, but how will I know what the king looks like? Oh, my. The kingdom of Caddy Wumpus seems like it's full of lots of surprises. A street sweeper who looks like a king and a king... Well, we don't know what he looks like. Maybe we'll come back here next week and see if we can find a little bit more about Kingdom of Caddy Wumpus. The Gospel of Luke tells us that when Jesus began his ministry, he traveled from one town and village to another, proclaiming the good news of the kingdom of God. And in Matthew, Jesus tells us to seek 
First, the kingdom of God. Jesus talks a lot about the kingdom of God. He mentions it over 70 times in the four gospels. So this year, during the five weeks of Lent that lead up to Palm Sunday and Holy Week, we're gonna spend some time exploring this kingdom that Jesus talks about so much, such as today's scripture from the Gospel of Matthew, which goes like this. The kingdom of God is like a tiny grain of mustard seed that a farmer plants in the ground. It's the smallest of seeds, but it grows larger than all the other plants and becomes like a tree so that birds come and make nests in its branches. Then Jesus told another parable. The kingdom of God is like a little bit of yeast that you add to the flour and after waiting makes all the dough rise. Some of you know that before I went to seminary, I worked as a magician at children's birthday parties. The main job of a magician is to show you something unexpected. You think you know what it is that's going on, but if the magician has done his job well, you get surprised. The product of a magician's work is surprise. A rabbit appears out of an empty hat, an assistant fits inside an impossibly small box, a playing card disappears from the deck and reappears inside a lemon. Now, Jesus isn't a magician. He's certainly not trying to entertain us. Yet it's not uncommon to find his audience gasping in surprise at something that he says or does. Like the time he made a despised Samaritan the hero of his story. Or the time he complimented the prayer of the crooked tax collector rather than the one of the Pharisee. Or the time when the disobedient young son is celebrated by his father rather than the well-behaved older son. Whatever it is that Jesus is referring to when he talks about the kingdom of God, we know that it's full of the unexpected. It's like a tiny little seed that grows into a big towering plant. It's like a little pinch of yeast that makes the whole loaf expand. How interesting that Jesus would choose the mustard seed for his illustration of the kingdom. When it's fully grown, the mustard plant is more like a small, squatty bush or shrub than a tree. Why not compare the kingdom to a majestic oak or a towering redwood? Why not compare it to the mighty cedars of Lebanon? The prophet Ezekiel uses the cedar tree to symbolize the greatness of the Assyrian Empire as it towers magnificently over the other nations of the earth. King David uses cedar wood to build his palace and Solomon uses it to build the temple. But when Jesus needs an image for the kingdom of God, he uses a mustard shrub not only are mustard shrubs rather short and squat, they're invasive, persistent, and hard to get rid of. We might compare them here in Illinois to those honeysuckle bushes that grow everywhere. In recent years, the Park District and Macon County Conservation District have been waging a war against honeysuckle, hacking it down, burning them in big piles. But winning a battle against these persistent weeds seems doomed to failure. Like the humble dandelion, some plants just never give up. And maybe that's what Jesus is getting at here. He's not interested in whatever looks the most impressive or powerful. God's kingdom surprises us. It's like a weed that nobody notices until suddenly you realize it's 
everywhere. The life of Jesus himself seems a bit like a mustard seed. Born into an obscure peasant family in a tiny village, his teaching ministry only lasted a short three years, and yet within a few years of his death, his teachings have spread from Spain to India, which was much of the known world at the time. And over the next few centuries, Christianity grew from a small Jewish sect to a world religion with over two billion followers. From the smallest seed, something surprising happened. The kingdom of God isn't found in the halls of power among the great decision makers of the day, and the kingdom of God isn't impressive or famous in the way our culture recognizes those things. The kingdom of God is so ordinary and unassuming, it's easy to overlook or dismiss. And yet it surprises us. From something so small that it seems invisible, God works wonders among us. Now we have some pretty amazing gardeners here in our church who not only make impressive gardens at their homes, but make the outside areas of the church beautiful and welcoming. But every summer, something else grows at our church. Small, persistent flowers pop up through the cracks of our sidewalk and parking lot. We don't invite them, they just surprise us every year. Perhaps we should call them kingdom flowers because they're small, persistent, and unexpected. And who might have guessed that this small gathering of rather insignificant folks might contain something special? As Jesus says, the kingdom of God is here among us. At a meeting that took place on Zoom last week, we learned that our presbytery has lost so much income that we have to reduce the size of our already small staff. And that's after saving money the previous year by getting rid of our presbytery's office space, which was located here in Decatur. The Presbyterian denomination, which once seemed to be an unstoppable juggernaut in the 1960s, with big, impressive church buildings in almost every town and city across the country, is now desperately trying to keep from going broke. And our big buildings are often more a liability than an asset. We're certainly not a tall oak tree anymore, or one of the more impressive cedars of Lebanon. But maybe we're a mustard seed. The kingdom of God doesn't fade away like everyone expects it to. It's invasive, tenacious, it's surprising. Jesus is telling us to expect God to do something unexpected. My favorite magic trick that I used to do at children's birthday parties was making a rabbit appear out of an empty box. Well, sort of an empty box and sort of a rabbit. After showing that the box was empty, I would say the magic words, open the box and nothing, no rabbit. I would say the magic words again and again, still no rabbit. As I looked, Disappointedly at my crowd of eager children, some would notice that bunny ears were poking up out of the top of the box. They would start yelling at me to look at the bunny, but every time I looked at the box, they were gone. And every time I looked away from the box, the bunny ears poked up again. It was one of my favorite tricks, because it's fun to see the look on someone's face when they think you aren't aware of the magic that taking place right in front of you. In the Gospels, here are all these people standing right in front of Jesus 
and they seem oblivious to what's going on. The Pharisees think Jesus is offensive and rude. The wealthy young man walks away disappointed from his conversation with Jesus. His own disciples don't understand most of the things he says and fall asleep in the hour of his greatest need. It's as if the most amazing thing in the world is happening right in front of them and they don't see it. Maybe it's because they're expecting the cedars of Lebanon, but what they see is just an old mustard shrub. The kingdom of God doesn't show up where people expect it, and it doesn't try to accomplish things in the way things usually happen. It surprises us. As a magician, my favorite audiences were always young children because they love surprises. They were always eager to see the world as a wondrous place. But when my audience got to be about fourth or fifth grade, things got harder. Instead of simply enjoying the surprises, they often wanted to figure them out. I know how you did that they would yell at me, or it's just a trick. They started acting like they needed to know how everything in the world works. They wanted access to all the secrets. And sometimes us adults are just the same way. We're only interested in the things that we can figure out. We want everything around us to be under complete control. We don't like surprises. No wonder Jesus had to keep talking about the kingdom of God over and over again. It's hard for us to accept those things that resist our ability to control them. It's hard to open ourselves up to surprises. And yet, according to Jesus, they're all around us little mustard seeds of possibilities, just waiting to be noticed, just waiting to grow into something amazing. Thanks be to God. Amen.
The Confession of 1967 in our Presbyterian Book of Confessions tells us that life is a gift to be received with gratitude and a task to be pursued with courage. God reveals divine love in Jesus Christ by showing power in the form of a servant and wisdom in the folly of the cross. God frees us to work for justice and peace in society and in other ways to use our creative powers for the fulfillment of human life. together in prayer. God of surprises, indeed your kingdom surrounds us, but too often we look for it in all the wrong places. We look to the places of power and strength rather than the subtle yet persistent shrubs right next door. We look at the mighty cedars instead of the humble dandelions or daisies which bloom and grow even when it seems impossible for them to do so. May our faith and our work continue to blossom and grow, even in the face of adversity and hardship, even in the midst of a pandemic and political upheaval. May your love, your tenderness, your mercy, your goodness fill our hearts and astound us and all those around us. As your kingdom takes root and finds new ways of manifesting itself in our midst. Lord, our hearts are full this morning as we think about those who need your loving comfort and never-ending support. We pray for those who are ill 
and those who care for them. We pray for Texas and other parts of the country hit hard by the bitter cold and power outages. We pray for our church and our presbytery as we continue to look for new ways and new places to plant your kingdom seeds. Lord, we know that we do not walk this journey alone, that we have others beside us that will help guide us and shape us. We thank you for their nurturing spirit. We pray this and all our prayers in the name of Jesus, who came in love and who taught all his followers to pray together, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. in unexpected ways and lead you on the way. And may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit guide us and direct us. Amen. Amen.